Bagsak na naman ako sa transpo. Nakakainis. Paglaro na nga lang. He was always curious about how people traveled from one place to another and wondered why sometimes the roads were busy and sometimes they were not. Let's embark on an exciting adventure to learn about the four-step model of transportation planning. Jan Split started his adventure by observing the different types of trips people in his neighborhood made. He saw families going to the market to buy groceries, students walking to school, and workers riding buses to their offices. Jan Split also noticed that some people preferred to ride bikes while others took tricycles or jeepneys, which were popular modes of transportation. Jan Split decided to make a chart to keep track of the different types of trips and how many people were making them. He used colorful pictures to make his chart fun and engaging, and he was excited to see the patterns that emerged. Hi, I'm Dr. Rowe, Master of Transportation. Trip generation is the first step in the four-step transportation forecasting process widely used for forecasting travel demands. This step answers the question, how many trips will be there in the future in the study area? In this step, the total number of trips generated by a specific area or zone is estimated. This is typically done using demographic data such as population, employment, and land use characteristics. The result is an estimation of the number of trips that originate in each zone. John Split wanted to understand where people were going and how far they traveled. He decided to create a map of his city and mark the different destinations people were traveling to. He saw different kinds of trips like going to the market, going to the university, or going to work. Jan Split used different colors to represent the different destinations on his map and drew arrows to show the flow of trips from one place to another. He was fascinated to see how people moved around his city and how different destinations were connected. Dr. Ha, Master of Transportation. Trip distribution is a process by which the trips generated from each zone are allocated to other zones in the study area. This step estimates the destinations of the trips and the routes they are likely to take. These trips may be within the study area or between the study area and the areas outside the study area. Jan Split continued his adventure. He wanted to learn more 
about how people chose the mode of transportation for their trips. He interviewed his neighbors and friends to find out why they chose to walk, bike, or take public transportation. Jan Split created a survey to collect data on the different modes of transportation people used in his city. He also used pictures and illustrations to make his survey fun and easy to understand. He discovered that some people preferred to walk or bike for short trips, while others used buses or jeepneys for longer trips. He even learned that some people used a combination of different modes of transportation depending on the distance and convenience. Hi, I'm back. In this step, the transportation mode that travelers are likely to use for each trip is estimated. This shows the number or percentage of travelers using a particular mode of transport compared to the ratio of all trips made. Transportation modes include different modes such as cars, buses, trains, bicycles, or walking. The selection of one mode or another is a complex process that depends on factors such as travelers' income, the availability of transit service or auto ownership, and the relative advantage of each mode in terms of travel time, cost, comfort, convenience, and safety. Finally, Jan Split wanted to understand why vehicles go in different ways. He then also remembered how the students walk in one path. Even though there are other possible paths, he learned that different transportation modes are assigned to different routes based on factors such as travel time and distance. Jan Split created a map of his city. He pretended to be a traffic engineer and assigned different vehicles to different roads based on the data he collected about trip generation, trip distribution, and mode split. He saw how traffic flowed on the roads and how some roads became congested while others remained free-flowing. Step in the transportation forecasting process is traffic assignment. In this step, the estimated trips from each zone are assigned to specific transportation routes based on the mode choice and the available transportation infrastructure. This step also estimates the traffic flow and travel time on each route. Congratulations! You have successfully completed the four-step model of the travel demand forecasting. Upon learning all the four-step model, you are now a traffic master. Traffic master? What is that? He began to think about how the four-step model applied not just to his trip, but to his life as a whole. The trip generation could be our career choices. The trip distribution could be the different paths he could take. The modal split could be the balance between work and personal life. And the traffic assignment could be the obstacles and challenges we face along the way. Then he realized that the four-step model wasn't just a tool for urban planners, but a way of understanding and navigating the complexities of life. He suddenly thought about the complex problems that he encounters in his everyday life as a commuter. First, the poor road conditions which can make roads difficult and dangerous to drive on. Second, limited access to public transportation and lastly, traffic congestion that can cause delays, can lead to wasted time, and increased air pollution. Because of these problems, 
He also thought of some improvements that can be applied to those problems, which makes him kinda excited. He thought that the government should allocate budgets to roads that need immediate attention rather than the roads that are still in good condition. They should also conduct regular inspections and maintenance which can prevent damage and improve road conditions, making them safer and more reliable for drivers. The local government, for instance, could also invest in public transportation infrastructure to provide people with more transportation options. They could also encourage the use of sustainable transportation options, such as cycling and walking by building bike lanes and sidewalks. They could also implement smart traffic management systems, such as traffic lights that adjust in real time based on traffic flow to optimize traffic flow and reduce congestion. Road users should also be disciplined. They should know the rules and regulations to create a safe, efficient, and fair transportation system that benefits everyone. It is the responsibility of all road users. As he finished studying and do his homework, he felt a renewed sense of clarity and purpose. He couldn't wait to see where his journey would take him next. Thank you.